Good morning, I'm Jelly. And I'm Charlie. And we're here this morning in Bentley, Atlanta to review the 2018 Continental GTC Super Sports. Two of my favorite words. In just a few moments, we're gonna take you and walk you around the Dragon Red 2 Continental GTC convertible. We're gonna show you some of the specs about the car, give you some driving impressions, and give you a full walk around, show you a few things that maybe you didn't know about this vehicle. Let's do it. So, again, I'm Jelly. I'm Charlie. We are leaving Bentley, Atlanta in the new Continental GTC Super Sports. So, initial impressions. Obviously, I've spent some time in Continental GTs and GTCs before. This one is a lot more special. Uh, from the initial throttle tip-in, you know that this is a much more powerful example of the GT and GTC line. Still uses the twin turbo 6 liter W12. It's now 700 horse, 750 pound feet. 750 pound feet of torque, and all that torque is available from just 2600 RPM. Wow. So, yeah, low down torque is uh, one of my first initial impressions with this car. I'm a torque guy. I like that offline acceleration. This is a 3.40 to 60, I think. I believe so, yeah. Which, you know, nowadays doesn't sound incredibly impressive until you realize the heft of the car. We're 5,000, 5,400 pounds. Yeah, 5412, I believe, is the curb weight. So, when you look at the weight of a car like this, trying to get that motion moving, that's where that power really comes into play uh, but once it's moving you got to stop it right so carbon ceramics on a production vehicle yes. here they're uh, eight piston uh, 16 and a half inch carbon ceramic brakes up front okay normally you see carbon ceramic you think noise you think uh, you know uh, dust and, and squeal all kinds of problems but with these so far you get a good initial bite I don't get any noise I don't get any kind of uh, indication no shutter that this is anything other than a regular street brake they're definitely Bentley brakes. It's you said eight piston caliper front. Yep. Fantastic. So this uh, this one is spec'd out as most of the Super Sports are with a, a fair amount of options. A lot of carbon fiber you'll see on the exterior. Uh, we have the titanium sports exhaust, I believe. Seven thousand dollar option as wow. well as uh, checkered carbon fiber interior trim as well. Goodness gracious! And then we have the the name sound system, I believe. Correct it is. name for Bentley is okay. It? Uh, yeah, clever name, right? <laughs> uh, so I don't know the specs on that system, but nowadays uh, the concert style systems are what really impressed me in a convertible to get that level of audio. Things like heated and cooled seats, that kind of stuff is pretty standard now. Um, where this thing sets itself apart is not going to be in your AV and tech. It's going to be in your power and handling from, uh, from what I've experienced with it so far. So we're going to do a little pull on a left-hand turn here and see what it does. She goes. She goes. For 5,400 pounds, she goes. Yeah, okay. I would agree. Uh, I think my sentiments are I feel the, the turbos, obviously. There's not lag to it. I mean, it's pretty much instant power. Um, braking wise, you have decent braking bite initially. Really gets, you know, pedal press is firm. I have heard these will overheat on a track, but it's not a track car. It's a grand tour. I don't, I don't think anybody's bringing their 5,400 pound Bentley to the track, but you never know. Well, you know, I think what's unique about this car, I'm a, a grand touring type of guy. I enjoy that, uh, you know, that, that big coupe kind of feel. But what's unique about it is it fits in a real small niche you have where you have people that are looking for a high horsepower, comfortable sedan, uh, which I think this gives you a little bit of both. So I'm going to give us a little launch off the line here, keeping it under 55. As yeah. a passenger, it definitely gives you that wow factor. Yeah. There, there's there's no question about it. I mean, I've driven the car, it feels amazing to drive, but this is my first time riding shotgun and it definitely gives you that feel. I mean, aside from the, like you get in this car and from the minute you're in this seat, you realize you're in something special. The interior quality in here is just next level compared to just about everything else I've been in. Hmm. And this is, so it's Beluga Hides? Yes, it's a Beluga Triton. interior. With, and I mean, this color combination on these seats, we'll show you guys some pictures of it later, but basically this is, I believe, only available on this specific vehicle, the Super Sports. I don't think you can get this uh, interior on a uh, Speed or any other Continental. Beautiful. All right, I tell you what, well, I'm gonna hand the driver's seat over to Chuck here, take a little spin in it, and give us your impressions on the car from the driver's seat. I'll sit as a passenger. Uh, while we're waiting on the light here, we obey all traffic laws. I want to talk about from a family standpoint. I'm a family man, so that's important to me. 
So cup holders, you got two of them right here. They're not big gulp size, they're a little shallow, but uh, I think they'd hold your morning coffee. So from a practicality commuter standpoint, I think you'll be okay, but you're not gonna wanna put the kids sippy cups in there. No. Uh, no cup holders in the doors, nothing in the door pockets here. Looks like the back seat might get some cup holders. Yeah. And actually though, I will say, I haven't looked at it latch and everything back there to see how that's set up. But I will say it looks like you can fit some car seats back there. Uh, I don't think your average super sports no. owner is yeah. putting toddlers in the back. Um, I will admit that I have before. I have done it for um, a Spur and a Bentega, and they handle quite well. I don't know that I would be putting them in a super sports long term, but I do think it looks like it could do it. Uh, when we go over the zero to 60 score later, I'll give it an actual metric, but I'm gonna call it doable, uh, not, not incredibly practical. That's fair. All and right. I do believe the average Bentley owner owns like six cars or something like that before they buy a Bentley. So, I mean, I, th I think it's pretty fair to say that this isn't going to be uh, most people's daily driver. All right. Well, Chuck, let's give it a go. Let's do it. Do your seatbelt. Yeah. So, you know, talking about the, the seatbelt extender thingy majabi, I'm sure it's got a name, <laughs> but I do love it because, I mean, heaven forbid I have to reach over my shoulder in my three-piece suit to get my own seatbelt. I do believe it's actually called a seatbelt valet. Of seatbelt valet. Well, speaking of that, we do have a valet score. And again, we'll talk about it later, but I'm pretty sure this vehicle is going to qualify pretty high on oh, that no, scale. Yeah. There's no way you pull up anywhere in the valet isn't keeping this up front. Yeah. All right, so we talked about the checkered trim. I can really see it from this seat. It's beautiful, kind of got an inlay there. Uh, you'll see it in some of the beauty shots here in just a few minutes. Uh, we do have the cold seats. We have the climate control off right now for your audio pleasure, but it is summer in Georgia, so the car's a little warm. The uh, top, so I've had some convertibles before, and something I've noticed about this top is it's a lot more insulated than your average Absolutely. convertible top. Uh, I don't know the sound deadening specs on it, but I know driving with the top up, you wouldn't know that this is a convertible. So from an NVH, you know, noise vibration harshness level, uh, there isn't any. I mean, it's, it, you would expect that in a Bentley, but it's worth mentioning that you can certainly drive this thing down the highway at 70, 80 miles an hour, as long as that's the speed limit, with no consequences from a, uh, from a sound standpoint. And one thing I definitely have to talk about on this car, uh, just after driving it for no more than a minute, is definitely the steering wheel. The steering wheel, I mean, I've always been a big fan of Bentley steering wheels, but this just feels amazing. You can feel the contours in the leather, and then on top of that, you've got, um, these paddles are reminiscent of those in the Lamborghini Gallardo, actually. I do. We have extended paddles, right? So you've yeah. got a little bit longer tip there for the fingers, which yeah. I appreciate. And they're column mounted as well. At, uh, I, I don't know if it's exactly at 10 and 2 where you, where you normally hold, but it looks like you've got some padding there for, for that extra feel. And then what I love on the Super Sports is the stripe down the center of the wheel. Uh, I, again, this is not a track day special, but having that little stripe there for uh, orientation as you're going through the turns is kind of nice. A lot of torque there. And he's got it in the sport mode here, so you hear those burbles and you feel those pops. So Bentley was not known necessarily for that type of uh, sport feel to the car until recently. They came out with the GT3R, and then with this car, where you have those burbles and pops and, and that kind of exhaust, your average spur, on that kind of car, you're not going to get that uh, that aggressive, sporty exhaust. So I've really liked that turn they've taken. Yeah. I mean, you can tell they're kind of conforming to the market now. I mean, I think everybody, I think it's safe to say that every manufacturer is kind of putting a little bit of sport into their luxury car. Yep. It's kind of become expected. Yep. I mean, you get into a 7 Series nowadays and you're, you're expecting some level of sportiness regardless, regardless of what you're in. Not a flat bottom steering wheel. I'm going to dock them a couple points for that. <laughs> and the uh, the Volkswagen Automotive Group does have a couple of flat bottom wheels. They can stick one uh, from the GTI in here if they needed to. <laughs> Obviously, the plush carpet, that's something that's always astounded me in these cars. I'm, uh, I'm not going to recommend you take your shoes off and dig your toes into the carpet of a car that's not yours. But the carpet in these is thicker, okay. fuller. Again, it comes with that sound deadening. Super Sports logo embroidered into the seats. Yeah, I mean, the seats are amazing. The bolstering is great. They hold you very well. It's... Looking at the amount of carbon in the car, just from the passenger seat, you can see the carbon mirrors. That adds a nice touch to it. Obviously, on the exterior, there's a significant amount of carbon from little trim pieces here and there, hood vents. Um, but that, not only, it's it's not really for weight savings at this point. It's for looks. I understand that, but I can appreciate that from a. It adds that sport appeal. Yeah. 
Nights. And I mean, this is something absolutely special. I mean, you can tell. So we went to um, Caffeine and Octane, uh, which is basically our local Atlanta Cars and Coffee. Sure. Um, we took it on Sunday, this past Sunday. And this car probably got more attention than 99% of the exotics. Sure. I mean, I believe it. regardless of age, you see this. And this has such a presence on the road and definitely in the parking lot. At low speeds, I mean, it's just everybody stops, everybody stares, everybody's like, what is that? Yeah. Little details like in the stitching, you'll see on the dashboard, it's two tones, the black and red um, leather dash. And, you know, the uh, one of the gentlemen in Atlanta told me, uh, he told me if it looks like leather, it is. So everywhere you touch, the visors, everything is leather. But the stitching they use, so on the red portion of the dashboard, you have red stitching. Black portion, black stitching. Um, and of course, you can get contrast stitching, but I like that attention to detail there. Yeah, I don't think I've touched plastic since I've been in this car. No, yeah. no except your credit card to pay for it. <laughs> Navigation system, I'm just playing with the infotainment while Charlie drives. Of course, don't use infotainment while you drive. Um, it does, you do feel its age a little bit. My understanding is that in the new Continental, they have the, the new infotainment system coming. Yes, the new Continental has an amazing infotainment system. It actually um, shares a lot of parts with, obviously, the, some of the newer, um, I believe it's actually on the Panamera platform, hmm. the, the new, next generation Continental, I guess we should call it. Okay, so you can have a lot more of that. I believe you can get CarPlay in the new model. I know you can get CarPlay in the new model. I believe you can get in the existing model. Um, you do have some basic car information stuff. You can get in here and you can look at your tire pressures. You can adjust, um, uh, you know, your suspension settings, which is again the super sports thing. They have the air suspension that you can adjust, um, and that does make a big difference as you go from that comfort to that uh, sport mode. You definitely feel it. Uh, traction control on this car, which again, being all-wheel drive, and this is a torque vectoring all-wheel drive system, so it'll send power to the to the wheels that need it. Uh, I believe it's it's defaulted to something like a 61% it's, it's, rear. Yeah, it's 60-40. Okay. Uh, but with a heavier, a nose-heavy weight bias, you get a little bit of that tail feeling to it. Uh, again, I, I don't think traction control is something that's really going to ever be turned off in these cars. Uh, I think you can bark them off the line with it off, but you're not going to do a big smoky four-wheel burnout. Uh, not that we ever would. <laughs> Stay tuned for future videos. Yeah, with 750 pound-feet of torque, you could probably get them to squeal a little bit getting up. Yeah, I think you could. I believe it's uh, 275 squared, and I believe they're 21s on all four, or either 21s They're 21s, 20s. yep. yep. They're 21s. Uh, wheels are a big thing for Bentley. You'll notice throughout their lineup, they spend a lot of time and attention on the wheels. Not to make them lightweight, but to make them look good. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you can get uh, obviously different styles, different colors, different cap colors. They've gone into doing a lot of black trim lately uh, on some of their the GT Speed models, yep. so you'll see that. And one thing we definitely have to touch on is this uh, Breitling for Bentley clock of course. in the center console. Of it's course. absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, well, there's only only one way to do it. You know, I was reading a story earlier this morning about a, a sister vehicle to this, the original 911R. Not the new 911R that everyone's selling for four million dollars the original 911r prototype and they actually took the clock out of the dash for weight savings on that car and you can think going to that level of extreme and i think this car represents the opposite of that Absolutely. there's no compromises in this yeah. car from a uh, they, they're not taking things out to save weight they're yeah. giving you the ultimate experience Absolutely, soft closed doors leather on everything there, there's no part of this car that they skipped out there yeah. there's no part of this car that feels cheap as there shouldn't be for 360,000 dollars. Correct. And you know, we do have a value segment of the, of the rating scale, which we'll talk about too, that, that discusses uh, initial price value, then, then over time, uh, how the value changes uh, with depreciation and other things. I would say that uh, initial price value is hard to put a figure on with these cars because you get so many features you're not gonna get in other vehicles. Everything is hand-touched. Uh, I would say, Long term, the Super Sports is going to hold its value a lot better than your average Continental GT or GTC. Absolutely. So this is going to get a higher rank there. Yeah, you hear the turbo whoosh, and again, you know that torque from the bottom end is uh, is felt. Now, top speed is 205 on the convertible. I believe it's 206. Okay, uh, I know the coupe's a little bit higher, something like 209. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, again, more than you're ever going to use in your in your daily driving. Oh, completely. So 
exclusivity we talked a bit about 710 is what they're making correct uh, so 710 is what um, this car makes in metric horsepower I believe okay. so a standard it's 700 horsepower um, and then the I believe there are 250 coming to the US and I could be wrong on this specific number but I believe there are only three in this dragon red two color Wow. so the dragon red two is obviously as the name indicates it's an evolution of dragon red uh, one of the most popular original colors. I think it's got more depth. I think it's a little darker. Uh, it's got more depth. We have a Bentayga at the Bentley Atlanta store that's also in the Dragon Red 2 with the carbon fiber. And that offset between that rich crimson red and that black, uh, that's hard to beat. And if you do drive it in comfort mode, if you, you know, if you want to enjoy a, a drive to coffee, you know, I, I joke about uh, you want to, if you take a, a, an average Bentley line, you can be doing 100 miles an hour sipping your coffee and you won't notice you're flying on a cloud, right? Um, again, where this sets itself apart is in that average Continental GT or in that average Flying Spur, you are going to feel the power, but you're not going to uh, have quite as aggressive of an exhaust sound. You're not going to have as aggressive suspension tuning. This fits into that niche of you're not going to see another one at the gas station, that's for sure. And folks, we're going to try this. We don't know how the audio is going to sound, but we're going to pull over, put the top down. I think Chuck's going to let me drive. And we're going to see how it uh, at least gets you some video. Alright, so as you can see, we did a little driver swap. Hang on, let me wait for Henry to bring me my seatbelt. <laughs> did a little driver swap. We're going to see how the audio is with the top down. If nothing else, at least you get some video. Uh, and I didn't, uh, I didn't get a chance to mention this earlier, but I believe, if I'm correct, does this one have the massaging seats as well? I am not sure, but uh, because I, I think it does have the functionality on the side. That would really complete the set for me. So anyway, we're gonna flip around here and Grab again, the following, real quick. yeah, Charlie can go down the window sticker. Following all local regulations, we're gonna cruise back to the dealership. Yeah, so we've got a. Uh, $322,600 base price okay. for the Continental Super Sports convertible. Okay. So $6,000 upcharge for Dragon Red 2. Um, the Beluga interior is actually uh, no charge. Um, name for Bentley sound system, $7,975. Super Sports titanium exhaust, $7,870. Do these things have launch control? <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> You know, I talked to a guy one time about these cars, and I said, do they have launch control in it? He said, you know what launch control is in these cars? I said, what? He said, plant your right foot. Absolutely. He said, with this much power, this much torque, you don't need electronic wizardry to launch your vehicle. Oh, here it is, Jelly. Ventilated front seats with massage, so yes, they do. Wow. Put the windows up. Maybe that'll give us a little bit of audio dampening there. So, again, you can get your yourself massaged while being cooled while doing a three and a half second zero to 60 on your way to 205 mile an hour top speed. It's the Bentley way. That's fantastic. And I've got it in sport just because I like the burbles. It does make for a more aggressive shift profile. If you put it back into regular drive, you won't even know that the transmission is shifting. It's, you know, it's doing its job. Um, again, I like the burbles though, so. For the vlog. Roof line is low on the windshield. I hadn't yes, noticed that earlier. Uh, again, it's a profile for you know high speeds. I'm sure uh, taller people, you might be having to lower your seat a little yeah. bit so you're not staring over the windshield glass. Uh, we talked a little bit about infotainment earlier. From the driver's seat, controls are decently easy to access. Everything for your radio controls and climate has buttons. Now I'm a big button guy. Uh, I don't like all this stuff where you've got to go into a different sub menu and a sub menu yeah. and touch a touch a thing to touch a thing So having an actual button for my AC is nice. I know it can look dated to some but what Bentley does differently And hopefully you'll you'll be able to see this Because they have these knurled knobs 
It's got a little um, a little pattern to it, so you can more easily roll the knobs. Everything on here, everything you touch, is has that has that feel to it. So you're not just hitting a little plastic button to change your menu settings. You actually have a, a good feel to it. Yeah, and they have that same texture here on the shift lever as well as on the back of the paddles uh, as well. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, it is on the back of the paddles there for for grip, right? <laughs> Uh, looks like aluminum covers on the pedals, or aluminum look at least, yeah. which, again, in a in a luxury vehicle is kind of a funny thing to have. Um, I love the pull knobs for the air vents. Yes. So signature Bentley. Yeah, si signature thing you're not going to see anywhere else. I love that you you pull to open and push to close. That's just that's a a feature that really um, uh, every time you get to Bentley, you know you're in one. So that's going to conclude the driving portion of the vlog. We're going to do a, a couple more impressions here and a little bit of a walk around and show you some features. Uh, but thanks for joining us on the drive. Thank you, guys. Thanks for joining us today as we review the 2018 Continental GTC Super Sports. In conclusion, here's our score for the vehicle. For valet, it's an easy 10. Dynamics are up there, too, with the power and handling to earn it a solid 8. Toting the family around, well, those tight back seats got a 5. It's got enough cup holders and massaging seats to earn it a 7 on the commute section. The tech is certainly due for an update, which the new model is going to get, so we're giving it a 6 here. For overall value, it got a 7 for being such a low production vehicle. That gives it a 43 out of 60 on our 0-60 to 60 score. Join us next time for another episode of Asbury TV.